Okay, what day is it? It is Monday, Monday, Monday. So, Monday, what happened today? <sighs> Grand total of... Not much. Not much at all. Oh, I'm back. Ooh. Yeah, not much happened. So, <sighs> let's see, what do I have to do? Uh, Grand total of not much. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I am going to get done with what I do need to do, so be right back. Okay, so let's talk about free will, mostly because I just thought it'd be nice to talk about. So I believe that the doorbell is ringing a lot, but I also believe in free, there's a lot of noise, I also believe in free will. Which is, you know, not a universal opinion, but, yeah. The reason I believe in free will pretty much is just because I feel myself making decisions, so I'm gonna, you know, say, then take it at face value, even though I understand that, at the very least, we have limited free will, because, let's face it, no matter how much you want to, uh, say, chop off a finger, it's gonna be pretty fucking hard for you to bring yourself to do that because of, well, years of people, well, centuries of, you know, evolution, because, uh, pain bad, cutting off finger, definitely equals pain. But, you know, there are also some people who believe that there is absolutely no free will. And honestly, uh, even if I thought that was something that definitely was a thing, like, it was 100% provable that we have no free will, I honestly think that we should keep that from people, and that is gonna be the only time I'm gonna say something like that, ever. That is the only circumstance where I say, hey, maybe we should keep this from people, because, well, <sighs> the people, at least that I know personally, who believe there are that there is no free will, sort of act like dicks. And they use that as an excuse. So, it's just sort of a, pfft, I do not actually have control over my decisions, so succumb to basic desires, even though technically when I, it's sort of like a placebo effect, but in reverse. So, if there was provably no free will, well, I'm, sort of gonna expect most people to act like that, and so, yeah. Although the very thing that I, it either 100% proves there is no free will, because I would 100% always do that, or 100% proves that there is, because I would be able to make the decision to do that, which gets very complicated very fast, which is uh, <laughs> just sort of what do you have to expect when you start talking about free will? Because it gets very meta, in a sense, very quickly, because you are talking about decisions, even though you might not be able to make decisions. And that just can do people's heads in. But yeah, that is the one time I would advocate for not telling people things, because honestly, I'd say that most people would then immediately go to base desires sort of thing, but what do I know? I mean, <laughs> eh. yeah. And then there's also the case of, well, technically, it's not, you don't have free will, it's just you have pre-programmed responses, but still, that people are gonna treat that as pretty much the same thing for the most part, I think, which, again, leads to the same scenario, which, again, just... It almost turns into a form of cycle. And by form of cycle, I'm mostly talking about what I'm talking about, because I am definitely, definitely going in a circle here. So, what the fuck should I do? I think I am probably gonna, gonna take a walk. Okay, so, thought of something to talk about. 
<sighs> okay, so I said a few days ago, I think, that I was uh, writing a bit of a superhero comic book thing. Yeah. I said something along those lines. Now, anyway, I sort of want to talk about making a uh, superhero story in the current da, 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 climate. Now, I am at least mentally quite ambitious with this project, because what I want to do is start pretty much my own universe, which uh, I'm probably going to face facts. It's never going to happen, but uh, I still want to. So, yeah. Problem is, in order to create a superhero that doesn't seem incredibly derivative, you got to put in a lot more work than, say, I imagine people had to do when, you know, superheroes were just a thing. Just weren't yet a thing, is what I tried to say there. Because, well, uh, they weren't a thing, so there were a whole lot of things that seemed a lot more new, like guy with super strength. But now, you gotta get really uh, specific in order to not seem like you're copying enough someone. I mean, if you're patriot patriotic and strong, uh, you're a Captain America ripoff. If you have some form of animal-based power, unless you uh, really, really change something up, like, I guess, I did. You're gonna seem uh, like, well, any number of Marvel ripoffs. So, you gotta get either really imaginative with powers, which is, again, difficult, but you could also get really, really, really specific. Like, this guy only has control over gravel. But that, uh, that can lend itself to confusing things or cheesy things, or more comedic things, pretty quickly, I think. You know, like, the man who can only control cheese, and then if you're trying to make something serious, then, well, good luck with that. Yeah. So, you have to walk, I think, what is a line that is becoming smaller and smaller. I mean, well, thinner and thinner. It used to be a, just a floor. And every time something becomes, you know, synonymous with Marvel, DC, or even Dark Horse, well, a bit of, of uh, the floor gets chipped away. And sometimes large expanses of that floor. I mean, if you got someone who just fights with money, they're going to be instantly compared to either Batman or Iron Man. Which is unfortunate, but I guess sort of just part of the job. Or, not job, work. Oh well. Okay. Hmm. Huh. So, stuff. Any more stuff? Do I have more stuff to talk about? Hmm. Aha. Okay, here's something. So, crap, I forgot it. Okay. Yeah, okay, so, I think I have said at least once or twice before how I hate English class. And this is, uh, this is mostly because they treat something which doesn't apply to pretty much anyone's life, and they don't even teach it that well, at least from my perspective, because Pretty much they're just, they're trying to teach you how to look deeper into text, but 
I think they do it really badly. They try and make you dissect the piece into little bits instead of... And one thing that really, really ticks me off is they pretty much say you can't use the word I in any essay, which I think is uh, actually detrimental to trying to look into literature as a whole, because... The entire act requires an I. I mean, otherwise it is taken as fact, and there is no fact in literature. None. Especially fiction. In, you know, non-fiction, yeah, you can use facts, but the liter the piece itself is not a fact. And if you try and use facts on it, unless you're talking about actual, like, provable things of, that is, you know, around the world, like, uh, I don't know the composition of air, which, again, really shouldn't be in an essay, but the elimination of I is really a problem because it's a very personal thing. I mean, you are, at best, saying this is what I think about it. So removing the I sort of removes the opinion, and suddenly people think, okay, there is only really one way to think about it. Or at least, it encourages sort of a one-track mind. And it isn't helped by, like, the essay prompts. It's like, oh, you can either be for or against this, but trust me, you want to be for this. Which, uh, I mean, there isn't one way to look at anything. Especially literature. Literature has infinite ways of looking at it. Especially, well, everything, actually. No matter what the author is trying to lead you to, you can always see it the opposite way because of personal experience. And again, they try and cut that out of it too. They try and make it into something that you can only take as a social thing, like this is how society should see this, which sort of takes away the main point of literature. Yeah, there's what society sees about it, and everything's always going to be saying something about society. But even that requires a bit of a personal scene. Like, you can say, okay, this is what he was going for, but from this, I actually think the opposite. Like, just because everything is pushing one way does not mean that you have to agree with that. And that's sort of what English does, in a sense. They're like, okay, this is definitely what Huckleberry Finn's about. Okay, this is definitely what Gatsby's about. And this is how he is. I mean, like, Nick in Gatsby is a jackass, and everyone is a jackass, but some people might say, oh Jesus, these are so much better than the people I know, and that's invalidating their point of view, or, oh, these guys aren't bad, they're just misunderstood. I mean, by saying these are one thing, it invalidates an infinite amount of completely right opinions about that book. I mean, at best, literature acts as sort of a way to push water, but every time you push a volume of water, water is going to push back a bit and go around the barrier. So no matter what, there are always going to be things that are for and against, and millions of other ways too. So saying you have to be in this place where the water is being pushed is just detrimental to what you're trying to teach in the first place. But uh, yeah. Now, I'm going to go and do some editing, and I'll be back if there's something more I want to talk about. Jeez, that's red. Okay, well, uh, this is the end of the video, so buttons and I will see you tomorrow.